Hey guys, I'm back to do another video. So, as you can see here, I've, um, I'm using a different camera. I'm using a GoPro, just giving it a try. Kind of gives you a wide view, can see better. I think it'll come out quality view a little better, as opposed to using a you know a, t uh, a phone. Um, but you can see there, I added a TV and it plays uh, demo videos of different games that you know Nintendo, PlayStation, or any game that I like. I'll just play videos there, like at a store. You know, I went to Home Depot and got this uh, metal hook there to uh, bolt onto the wall mount of the TV into the Hastings. So it just hooked up there, bolted, and I think it came out pretty good. The wires are, are all internal inside of it, so you don't really see anything. So it's a clean finish. Um, the, the media player is from uh, Xbox One kiosk that I sold some time ago. I kept the media player and I figured I'd use it down the, down the road, and sh you know, sure enough, I'd I use it in this case. Um, I can take it off in the future if I want, but uh, that's cool. Just an idea. And then I also updated the trans lights. So as you can see there, there's no longer the PlayStation or the Xbox sign anymore. Now it says World of Nintendo. Most, you know, themed with the room being all Nintendo. Um, you know, and it has all these different logos, you know. Zelda, Mario, more Mario, Metroid, Mario Galaxy. And then on this side, you know, there's uh, Donkey Kong. There's some hidden behind there, like Mega Man 9, and I don't know what else is over there, but those are all the different games that I really liked growing up. So, the way that I do my my signs is, first I went to get the trans lights, is I, I went to get plexiglass at Home Depot Lowe's. They sell it. You can get it cut to whatever dimensions you want. And then from there... All you do is, um, you know, get it, get it cut, get it installed. But as far as the signage is concerned, you know, there there are people that can do this professionally. But given that I'm on a budget, what I decided to do was I went online. I got some ideas. You know, I've always seen the World of Nintendo cabinets that are very hard to find, very expensive. So I said, you know what, let me do my my own version on it. And so. I found, luckily I found a very high resolution of the world of Nintendo to, to use as a base and then I decided let me put logos on it and it came out pretty decent I think. Um, the way that I do that though is whatever measurements I need to, to do, you know, this one's like 4 feet long and I don't know how many inches wide, I think 13, almost 14 inches tall, what I'll do is at that point I'll do my measurements, convert them over to millimeters and then I'll treat the millimeters as pixels. And so from there I can upscale or downscale, you know, my, my pixels that I need. And that way I get the right image size that I need. So when I print it out, I know that it's gonna fit in the dimensions that I need when I use paint or whatever program I'm using. And so based on the paper that I had available for me, which was 11 by 17, um, I knew that I was going to have to divide this based on the measurements into five parts. So I went online, I found an image splitter. It's websites that can do that for you for free. So I, I put the image that I wanted to split into five parts, and then it, it split it up. I printed it out, and I cut it, and then I put it together, and I think it, it, works, it works wonders. Um, so any ideas like that that you might have in the future for, for your own game room, you can do that. That's how I do it. I mean, you can see here other other signs that I've created. You can see based on the dimensions of the paper or what I got to work with, I'll make it work. So I've done that also to um, to the shelves. You can see there where it says um, Nintendo Switch, and then it has the the Pro Controller there. So there's always different ideas you can do to come up with, but uh, you know that's what I do. Um, what else have I done in the game room? Um, I put uh, my sound system. I used to only just have the towers, but I added more speakers and I added a subwoofer to it. And it's a pretty loud sub. I mean, it's a 260 watt uh, Klipsch, or I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's it's a good quality brand. And I put the center channel up top there, and you know the back. It's a 5.1 sound, so but I just put it all in the front. Um, it sounds amazing. It sounds really, really loud. Um, and what else did I do? Oh, 
I found these standees. I have three of them. Over there is the Super Mario Maker. Um, they're about five feet tall. Um, some of these are double sided, like the back of the Mario Maker one has Nintendo 3DS games on it. I think like Link Between Worlds and some other games, several games there. So you can, so some of these are double sided. That one has Mario and Luigi Superstar. And on the back of it, I think it has the 100 Mario game that came out for like Mario, best 100 Mario party games. So there's different uh, signage on them if I want to flip them. But this one is single sided, the Mario Odyssey one. That one only has Mario Odyssey on both sides. But I think it's cool because it fits perfect with the kiosk here because you know it's Super Mario Odyssey. So it looks cool. I've also updated the Wii kiosk. Um, I actually found the demo disc for Zelda Skyward, uh, Skyward Sword. So this is the demo, it says right there, demo version, so it's not the retail version. And I found the signage that goes with it as well for, th for the kiosk. Luckily some guy was gracious enough to give me the scans and so I printed them out. And it looks perfect, it looks it looks part of the kiosk now, so now it's Zelda theme. Um, I also had to fix the controllers, so when I got these for this kiosk, both of these controllers were dead, the wired, the wired controllers. Um, come to find out that this thing never connects the nunchuck. I don't know what is, but something must have shorted out. The Wiimote will connect, but the nunchuck will never connect. And so I've, I've tried many times to make it work, and even I had extra control wired controllers, and it would never work. Um, so what I ended up doing is I ended up buying some retail controllers online for like 25 bucks and then rewiring these wires to the retail boards um, this one's a little bit harder to do because there's a Wiimote control uh, connector down here in the bottom you have to get rid of because this has to fit in there now and the wires have to solder to the main board to this Wiimote um, it's a little difficult but it's doable if you know what you're doing and then I used a Wii U hub that's hidden behind the TV to connect to it because all these need is power, they're synced already to the to the console. So, if you want to see what kind of stuff this demo version of Skyward Sword has, let me. Oops, I dropped my controllers there. Let me go ahead and show you here. So there we go. So I'm gonna wait for this. All these warnings. Uh, hold on. All right, a little bit more. We're almost there. There it is. So this version of Skyward Sword that came out for Kiosk only has three things in it. <laughs> it has the bird riding, the dungeon, and a boss battle. So you can select which one you want to do. Different aspects of the game. Um, so that's all it really has. It's just a special version of, you know, it's an actual disc. It, you put it in there, and when you're when you put the disc in, it, you know, you go to the home menu of a retail unit, and you click Skyward Sword. Once you're in there, it will not let you get out of there, no matter what buttons you press. You see, you hit the home button, it won't. The software is designed to not let. Um, users you know at the kiosk change any settings so you're you're locked out you have to play this game or you have to reset the console if you want to get out of this <laughs> which i think is uh you know when it's a kiosk you don't want people to mess with the, with the unit so they have to do that um what else have i done oh yeah another update that i have is you know as you can see here i don't have the gamecube kiosk not that i sold it i never would <laughs> But I actually ended up putting it in my closet. So now it fits in my closet. I got a bunch more displays or signage that I haven't even been able to to use. And due to you know the pandemic going on, I even have this thing that goes on the Nintendo Switch kiosk. This is cover. A lot of the kiosks right now are are, are inoperable. And so what stores are doing is they're putting these covers on them to prevent customers from touching them. You know, just to prevent germs. Um, but yeah, so now I have the GameCube kiosk that has a Game Boy player on it and it's playing Mario Brothers right now, but 
the reason it's playing Mario Brothers is because recently I acquired the um, I acquired these here the um, the e-reader cards sorry and so I have most of the cards that you could get for the set honestly I think the only ones I'm missing are the cards that came out in the Walmart exclusive pack I think it had like seven cards and two of those, those cards you can only get in that set but I've I think I'm missing just card one and two that were released in America. I have all the other cards, and then um, you know I put I put some of my duplicates over there just just for kicks because I thought it was cool. But yeah, that's that's the update to the game room. I added sound system. I've updated my Wii kiosk. I've updated my cabinets. You see there, it plays different games. I was playing uh, one of my the Japanese uh, <laughs> commercial of Heart Gold and Soul Silver. And then, oh yeah, one more update. Um, I kind of organized my games a little bit better. See, I have some N64 games, GameCube, Wii, Wii U, 3DS. Just behind it is my stacks, but in front I put the ones that I really want to show, show off. So that's something cool I did there. Um, but yeah, this this game room's you know constantly changing, different ideas that I want to do. But I think, you know, it's coming out pretty good. I think I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty much at the point where the only thing I want to add to this game room is probably going to be either an N64 kiosk or a Super Nintendo kiosk, which I hope to find in the future. They're not easy. But that's my next goal. So hopefully if I do another video, it'll be if I manage to acquire one of those. Or who knows, maybe I'll find another kind of Nintendo kiosk that I wasn't expecting, you know. I'd hopefully like to find some of the handheld kiosks, which are also hard to find, but we shall see. Have a wonderful day, and thank you for watching this video.